Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We're asking, Lord, you speak to every heart. And your word will benefit and prosper in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I was studying from verse 1. Let's start by reading some selected verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it tells us, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. Verse 5, in verse 5, it tells us, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive a divine. From verse 12, in verse 12 it tells us, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. The passage we're looking at today speaks of prophesying, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. When a believer saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Spirit, receives the gifts of the Spirit, included in them the prophecy and speaking in tongues and prophesying. We need to understand the private use of the gift and the public use of the gift. In privacy, we can speak in tongues. When we come to the public worship, if there is speaking in tongues, there must be interpretation. Speaking in tongues plus interpretation equals prophecy. And the prophecy is a message from God that gives us edification. So today we're looking at the message, the peculiar power of prophetic preaching, the peculiar power of prophetic proclamation. Three things we're looking at in the study. Number one, the purposeful ministry of prophets to edification. The ministry of the prophet or prophecy in the church is purposeful and it is to edify the believer, edify the members of the church, edify the church. Number one, then the purposeful ministry of prophets to edification. Number two, the profitable message of prophets with explanation. The profitable message of prophets with explanation. Number three, the passionate messengers with power and endowment. When we have the Holy Ghost saturating us, immersed into the Holy Ghost, and we have that power of the Holy Ghost upon us is the endowment of power, and it makes us passionate messengers of the Lord, the passionate messengers with power and endowment. Number one now is the purposeful ministry of prophets to edification. First Corinthians chapter 14. We're reading from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. Verse 2, 
For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto men, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be each in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Then in verse 3, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. In verse 4, it tells us, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edify edifies the church. Verse 5 now, in verse 5, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh in tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. We're talking of the ministry of the prophet. And that ministry of the prophet is telling us about what it does, the accomplishment that it has, and the edification, the exhortation, and the comfort it brings to the church. As we talk of the ministry of the prophet, let's look at Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12, we're reading from verse 10. In Hosea chapter 12, reading from verse 10, it says, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Here is the Almighty God saying, I have spoken. I have revealed my mind. I have given the message by the prophets. And then in the last line, it talks of the ministry of the prophets. What's the purpose and what's the use of that ministry of the prophet? Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Their deliverance, their redemption, their salvation, and their escape from slavery was by the ministry of the prophet. And then it says, the latter part of that verse 13, and by a prophet was he preserved, brought out, delivered, redeemed by the ministry of the prophet, and then preserved by the ministry of the prophet. So I want to find out from the Old Testament and New Testament the ministry of the prophet, edifying, exhorting, and comforting. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the excelling ministry of former prophets. That is the prophets of the Old Covenant, the prophets of the Old Testament, the excelling ministry of those former prophets, Number two, the ensnaring ministry of false prophets. As there were faithful prophets, there were also false prophets, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and in the last days, in the days in which we are living today. And the Bible has made that very clear, the ensnaring ministry of false prophets. Number three is the edifying ministry of faithful prophets the prophets that speak the mind of god the word of god and they give the word as the lord has given and then he declares that word unto us bringing conviction confession and conversion unto the lord and the consecration and commitment of members of the church a divine ministry of faithful prophets number one the excelling ministry of former 
prophets. Already we have read from First Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verses 1 to 5. Let's look at verse 12 now. In verse 12, it tells us, Even so ye, for as much as ye as zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. As we proclaim the word, as we prophesy, as we preach the word of the Lord, the intention and the purpose is to edify the church. In uh, Zechariah chapter 1, reading from verse 3, it tells us, Zechariah chapter 1, in verse 3, Therefore say thou unto them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, says the Lord of hosts. And then in verse 4, it tells us in verse 4, Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings, but they did not hear nor hearken unto me, says the Lord. In that verse 4, you'll find the words former prophets. All the prophets that came before Zechariah, all the prophets that came in the Old Covenant, Old Testament. What was their message? The summary of their message is, Turn now from your evil ways and turn from the evil doings but then it said they did not hack in jeremiah chapter 7 reading from verse 23 jeremiah 27 chapter 7 verse 23 but this he commanded i them saying obey my voice and i will be your god that's the message of the servants of god of those former prophets and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well unto you. Verse 25. In verse 25, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even said unto you, all my prophets, all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them and their message was that they will turn from their evil ways and seek the lord look at now the second point the second point is the ensnaring ministry of false prophets ensnaring ministry of false prophets matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 11 and verse 12 in Matthew chapter 24, verse 11, And many false prophets shall arise, shall rise, and shall deceive many. Those are the very words of Jesus Christ. In those days, there are false prophets. In the last days, there will be false prophets. And Jesus warned the church, the apostles, and the disciples, that there shall arise false prophets, and they shall deceive many. And then in verse 24, verse 24 tells us, it says, for there shall, be, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, the world they shall deceive the very elect. It tells us in Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 15, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, still warning the believers and warning the church, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. It says externally, they might appear smooth and nice and wise, and profitable because outwardly they will be like they're wearing sheep's clothing but then inwardly they'll be ravening uh, destructive uh, murderous wolves then in verse 16 uh, it says you shall know them by their fruits do men gather graves of thorns 
of figs, of thistles. It says in verse 20, verse 20, it says, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. They prophesy, they proclaim, they preach, but the preaching, the proclamation, and the prophecy will not change the hearts of the hearers. The false prophets might prophesy, but their message will not have a transforming effect or transforming power. They might even work miracles in verse 21. It says in verse 21, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 22 tells us many will say, many prophets, false prophets, many prophets, fake prophets, many prophets, deceptive prophets, many prophets, those who are misinterpreting, misapplying the word of God, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name I've cast out devils. And in thy name I've done many wonderful works. Then verse 23 tells us, it says, And then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. That means they were never born again. I never knew you. They never belonged to the kingdom of God. They never had the experience of being born again. And the Spirit of God never convicted them, or they never yielded to the conviction of their sin. They never confessed their sins. They never forsook their sin. They were still living in sin while they were saying they were prophesying or preaching or proclaiming. And there was no evidence of conversion or being joined unto the Lord in their lives. They were religious, but they were not righteous. The Lord said, I will proclaim, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. First John chapter 4. In first John chapter 4, we're reading from verse 1. <clears throat> Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world, many, not a few. Many false prophets in every country, in every part of the world, many false prophets have gone out into the world. And then it says in verse 6, verse 6 tells us, We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The false prophets have the spirit of error, the spirit of falsehood. The spirit of falsehood and false doctrine. But apart from former prophets, apart from the false prophets, there are faithful prophets. Number three now. Number three, the edifying ministry of faithful prophets. The prophets who are faithful are the ones that edify the church. They're the ones that carry out the great commission. They're the ones that bring out the word of exhortation. And they're the ones that bring out the words of conviction. That will bring sinners out of their sin and bring them into the kingdom. They're the people that will preach and then believers will be steadfast and stable and secured in the kingdom of God. And they will have the grace to abide in the kingdom of God by the obedience of their heart, of their lives, to the word of God. And they edify the members in making them to grow. 
making them to mature and making them to move on in the ministry of soul winning and helping all the people in the church, members and ministers, that they will go and excel in the kingdom and in the ministry the Lord has called them to the edifying ministry of faithful prophets. It tells us in First Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verse 3, But he that uh, prophesieth speaketh unto men. He that prophesieth, he comes in the public and he speaketh unto men. The men may be in the church, they may be outside the church, anywhere they are gathered to hear the word of God. He that prophesieth, the faithful prophet, speaketh unto men to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. It tells us in verse 12, it says in verse 12, Even so, ye for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. As you preach, edify as you prophesy, edify. As you proclaim the mind of God, edify the church. Verse 17. In verse 17, for, though, for thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. If you only speak in tongues, or if you speak in languages that people cannot hear, or if you speak the, pe the language that people hear, but it's so fast, or it's so modeled up, and it's not distinct, and people cannot understand, then you cannot edify the church. But you so speak, you so proclaim, you so preach, and you so prophesy that you may edify. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. In verse 26, it says in verse 26, how is it then, brethren? When ye come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. It say, whatever it is we have, let all things be done unto edifying. He wants us to so speak as to edify the people we are speaking to. Verse 31. In verse 31, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, that all may be comforted. Ye may all prophesy, all declare the mind of God, all proclaim the mind of the Lord, that all may learn, that sinners who hear will learn, the saints who hear will learn, Members who hear will learn. Non-members who are coming for the first time will learn. Those who need to pick up the word of salvation, repentance, redemption by the Lord will learn. And those who need to grow in the grace of God will learn. For ye all may prophesy, proclaim, and preach one by one. That all may learn. That all may be comforted. It tells us in Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 70. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. The faithful prophets are the holy prophets. The faithful prophets are the prophets that know the Lord with personal experience of salvation. And you know the Lord in personal experience of sanctification, holiness of heart, holiness of life. And the adjective that qualifies them is that they are holy prophets. And then the Lord spake by the mouth of those holy prophets, which have been since the world began. 
What did he say? Verse 71. In verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. 73, the oath which is swear to our father Abraham. What the holy prophets did was to bring the word of the covenant that the heavenly father had spoken to our father Abraham or the other covenants he made with the people of Israel. And the prophets will come and remind the people of God the terms of the covenant, the condition of the covenant, and the benefits of the covenant. They reminded the people of God, and those prophets still remind us of the covenant he made with our father Abraham in verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we have been delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. The prophets and the preachers who are faithful to the word of God, they come to remind us of the redemption of the Lord. How we'll be saved, how we'll be redeemed, how we'll be brought out of the slave market of the devil. And then we will serve the Lord without fear. What causes fear? The fear of God, the tormenting fear, is a sin we have committed. And when they show us the way of salvation, and our sins are forgiven, and we are redeemed, and we are reconciled with God, there is no fear, tormenting fear, of the punishment of our sin anymore. Now we can serve God without the fear of ultimate, final, eternal judgment. In verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. The prophets, if they are faithful prophets, if they are holy prophets, if they are prophets that will edify the church, they will remind us that Christ has died, that redemption has come. And now we can be saved from the hands of our enemies and we can have the grace and the strength and the influence of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit to serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our lives. That's the experience of sanctification after the experience of salvation were saved our external sins are taken away our external sins are forgiven and now we're sanctified and not only that we're not able to live righteously before men we're able to live in holiness and righteousness before god not only for one day one week or a short period of time we are able to live in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our life. I pray the Lord will affect each and every life in Jesus' name. I can't hear the amen. amen. Number two now. The profitable message of prophets with explanation. The profitable message of the prophets with explanation. In First Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verse 6, Now brethren, if I come unto you speaking of tongues, what shall, it, what shall I profit you 
except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. Here Paul the Apostle led by the Spirit of God explains to us that if we are in the church and we're speaking in tongues, how do we profit the people if they do not understand what we're saying? If we are preaching in our local language and we're preaching to foreigners who do not understand our local language, how are we going to be of benefit to the nation or to the foreigners if we're so zealous and we want to preach and all we can preach and say is in our own local vernacular. Let's say, for example, you're a Yoruba man and then uh, somebody is asking a question and then in asking that question in Yoruba language, you are answering the question in Yoruba language and we're transmitting that to nations and to foreigners that do not understand the Yoruba language. How do you profit the people? You might have a good message, you might have good understanding, but if what you are preaching is not reaching out to the hearts of the people, you will not edify the people. How do we do it then? Speak in the language that the people who hear you can understand. Then you will speak either you are giving revelation or you are giving knowledge or you are prophesying or you are teaching doctrine. If you speak in English, speak it in English. And then the interpreters all over, anywhere they are, can interpret that English unto the people and everybody will benefit that's telling us that whatever we're doing you're singing you're preaching anything you're doing do it to edification let there be proper explanation look at verse 19 in verse 19 is telling us here yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding. I need to understand what I'm saying. The people I'm speaking to, they need to understand what I am saying in the church, before the congregation, amidst the people of God. I'd rather speak five words with my understanding. And when I've spoken with my understanding and with the understanding of the people, then I can keep quiet and go and sit down than speaking 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the distinction of preaching message of the prophets. The message that pricks the heart. The message that brings conviction on the heart. The message that wakes up the sleeping sinners who are sleeping in their sin. The people who are dozing over their evil. The message that pricks the heart, that convicts the heart, that wakes up the sinner and sends them on their knees and praying and confessing their sins so that they can be saved and the message must be distinct the distinction of the preaching message of the prophets number two the declaration of the penetrating message of preachers preachers are not to entertain sinners preachers are not to entertain members of the church were to so speak that the lord by his word will discover everyone where they are and then they'll come out of their hidden places of their secret places and seek the face of the lord declaring the message that penetrates the hearts of the people number three that this mystification that is it's like a mystery and you demystify you unravel 
you expose, you explain, you apply that it will no more be a mystery. It will be meaningful in the hearts of the people who are hearing the clarification of the pungent message of persuaders. We come to persuade them, we come to convince them that they come out of their sins and they come to the Savior and they embrace the Savior and allow the grace of the Savior to have impact in their lives. Number one, the distinction of the preaching message of prophets. It tells us in um, Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah 58, we're reading from verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a prophet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. The preacher, the pastor, the prophet must be so clear, must be so distinct that the voice like that of a prophet will so sound that it will show the people their transgression and show the house of Jacob their sin. It tells us in Hosea chapter 8 verse 1. Hosea chapter 8 verse 1. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. It says the prophet should speak out so loud and so clear and so distinct that the house of Jacob or the religious people of the land will hear and they will know they have transgressed the commandments and the law of the Lord. In verse 2, it says, Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Verse 3, that same Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. He says, you make it very clear to those who are living in sin, even though they call themselves the children of Abraham, the children of Jacob, the covenant people of God, if they're living in sin and they have cast off the good doctrine and teaching and the law of God, tell them that because of forsaking the Lord, the enemy shall pursue them. Verse 12. In verse 12, I have written unto him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. It says, tell them, those are the people that I wanted them to turn away from their transgression and they count repentance as a strange thing. Those are the people after saving them, I want to circumcise their heart. I want to sanctify them. I want to purify them. I want them to be as holy because I am holy. They count holiness as a strange thing. I want them separated from the Gentiles, from the heathen, from the idol worshippers. I want them separated from the people who are living in idolatry and abomination. But they counted that word of salvation, of sanctification, of separation. They counted that as a strength thing. But don't you, prophet, keep quiet because of that. Raise your voice like a trumpet and tell them and show them they need to come back unto the Lord. And then the word of the Lord, spoken faithfully by the Spirit of God, will bring conviction and preaching into their hearts. Acts of the apostles, 
reading from chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, direct, whom ye have crucified, confrontational, whom ye have crucified, told them pointedly and told them persuasively, you are great sinners, you crucified and you slew and you killed the very Son of God, our Savior, Lord and Redeemer. But the Lord has made him Lord and Christ. In verse 37, verse 37, now, when they heard this, they were preached in their heart, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Conviction had come. When we proclaim the word of the Lord, we shall proclaim to the point, conviction will come to the hearers, and then they'll be willing to get saved, asking men and brethren, preachers, proclaimers of the word, what shall we do? Verse 38. In verse 38, Peter said unto them, repent, turn away from your sin. Get out of darkness, come out of evil, and come into the grace and to the salvation of the Lord. We're looking at number two there now. Number two is the declaration of the penetrating message of preachers. The declaration of the penetrating message of preachers. First Corinthians chapter 14, we're reading from verse 9. So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. It says the people that have the practice of speaking an unknown language, an unknown tongue, in the congregation of people that don't understand them, and the words they say are not understood. It says, how shall you be know what you are speaking? For you shall speak into the air. And if you are preaching the same way, and you are speaking a word, you are speaking a language, not understood by the people. You waste their time, you waste your time, and you speak into the air. And your goal is not to convert the air, transform the air, or transform the atmosphere. If you want to transform people, speak to the hearts of the people. What the people can understand, declare the penetrating word of the proclamation of the word of God. In verse 10, it tells us in verse 10, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification, without meaning. Every language in the world, all the voices in the world have meaning, signification, in verse 11, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh unto he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. The point is, speak clearly that the people who hear may understand. And they can easily take that word, they understand to the Lord in prayer. If they are not converted, they can confess their sins and then turn away from their sins and be born again. 
if they are saved but not sanctified, they can hear the word of God clearly and understand they need this next experience and consecrate their lives to the Lord and be sanctified. If they are saved and sanctified, they so understand the word of God that there is the power of the Holy Ghost. It shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And they can go to God and desire and demand and ask and pray for that power baptism immersion in the holy ghost and the power comes on them and then they can take power with the great commission with effectiveness it tells us in romans chapter 15 reading from verse 19 romans chapter 15 verse 19 through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Preach it, proclaim it, make the people to understand the good news of Christ and the good news that He died, that was buried, and that He rose again for justification, for redemption for our salvation in verse 20 yea so have I strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named lest I should build upon another man's foundation in verse 21 verse 21 but as it is written to whom he was not spoken of they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. They shall see, they shall hear, they shall understand. Number three, this is the clarification, the discernment of the pungent message of persuaders. We come to the people as preachers, as prophets, as pastors, as teachers of the word. And it is not only to speak, enjoy ourselves speaking, it is to make the word penetrate in their hearts and to persuade them that they shall run away, escape from the judgment to come. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men. If you know that the men you are speaking to, they are the brink of falling into hellfire. They are the brink, they are very near the pit of destruction. You'll not be entertaining them, knowing the terror of the Lord, knowing the eternal judgment, the eternal torment, the eternal suffering, the eternal pain that sinners will go through everlasting from the time they die, if they die in their sin, until throughout eternity. Knowing that terror and torment and suffering and pain that they will go through, you warn them and you persuade them, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also I make manifest in your consciences. That's why in verse 20, in verse 20, now then, we, we preachers, we, we prophets, we, we proclaimers of the gospel, 
we, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's church, be ye reconciled unto God. Be ye reconciled unto God. Let's say, for, for example, there's enmity between A and B, between one man and another man. And you want to reconcile them. And they have arguments against each other. A speaking against B. And B speaking against A. And you want to reconcile both of them. You have to speak clear enough, distinct enough to persuade both of them. And then reconcile them. Man is at enmity against God. God is an enmity against sinful man. And God speaks against the sinful man. And the sinful man is opposed unto God. And you want to reconcile the sinful man unto the holy God. You pray to God in such a fervent way, in such a convincing manner, you pray unto God in such a persuasive manner, reminding him that Christ has died for the sinner. And then God says, yes, I'll forgive him if he will repent. And then you have to speak to the sinner in such a persuasive way that if he continues in his sinfulness, in his transgression, in his rebellion, in his disobedience, there will be an eternal judgment and he will suffer forever and ever. And you convince him and you persuade him to the point he's willing to repent, he's willing to turn to the Lord, and now the man can be reconciled unto God through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the passionate messenger with power and endowment. The passionate messengers were power and endowment. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verse 20. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be each in malice, be children, but in understanding, be men. In verse 21, it says, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and men of other lips will I speak unto these people. When it says other tongues, that means strange tongues unknown tongue, foreign tongue unto them. When it says of the leaves, it's talking of foreign leaves, string leaves unto them. With men of other languages, I will speak unto these people. But look at what follows, and yet for all that, they will not hear me, says the Lord. That's the limitation of the speaking in tongues. That's the limitation of that foreign language. That's the limitation of a language not understood by the people we're talking to. Yet for all this, they will not hear me, says the Lord. Verse 22. In verse 22, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying. 
service not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Verse 23. In verse 23, therefore the whole church they come together into one place and all speak in tongues, all speak in foreign languages, all speak in unknown tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say ye are mad? In verse 24, but if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, is convicted of all, is persuaded of all, and is judged of all. Verse 25, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, his hidden sins exposed, his bad habits are exposed, and the things that will bring judgment upon him, they are exposed in his life. And those are the sixes of his eyes made manifest. So falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. We need to speak the word so clearly that the people who hear will turn to the Lord, turn away from their sins and repent. Luke chapter 24 verse 47 In Luke chapter 24 verse 27 And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem That's the commission That's the commandment that the thing he has commanded us to do and speaking in tongues speaking in tongues in foreign language that people don't understand will not achieve the purpose we have to speak in language that people understand and if there are people who don't understand there we have to have interpreters so that the word can come unto the people so that the word of repentance the word of turning away from transgression will be clear in the hearts and the minds of the people for the forgiveness remission of their sins among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the purified messengers with a demanding proclamation. Number two, the peculiar messengers with a demonstrated demonstrable prophecy number three the prevailing messengers over discerning people number one the purified messengers with a demanding proclamation look at that again in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 20 brethren be not children in understanding, in the understanding of scriptures, be not children, in the understanding of our commission, be not children, in understanding of acceptable worship, worshiping the Lord, be not children, in the understanding of our calling, a high calling, a holy calling and heavenly calling in the understanding of our calling of your calling be not children brethren be not children in the demand of the lord what it will take to get us to heaven and make the rapture be not children how oh, be it malice be ye children but in understanding the man in first Peter chapter 2, we're reading from verse 1, first Peter. Chapter 2, verse 1. 
Wherefore, laying aside all malice, you are saved, laying aside all malice, you claim sanctification, laying aside all malice, you have the nature of God, the mind of Christ, you are following after the Lord, and you are listening for the trumpet sound when the trumpet shall wake us up and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive shall be joined together caught up together with them into the sky wherefore then lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all envies and all evil speaking then in verse 2, it says, Desire as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. If you're going to grow, that will mean that you shed off all the habits, all the lifestyle of childishness, all the lifestyles of spiritual babes, and then you become matured you're growing up you grow in experience you grow in your knowledge of god and you grow in your intimacy with god and your life today is better brighter and higher and holier than your life yesterday as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby in verse 3 it tells us, if so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Lay all the malice aside. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness, all, all shades of bitterness, let all bitterness, all kinds of bitterness let all bitterness in the heart in the mind in the language all bitterness and wrath and anger is speaking to all the children of god is speaking to those who claim to be born again is speaking to those who have relationship with the lord and they are reconciled with god it's not, I am saved now so I can get angry, I can strive, I can fight. When I get sanctified, then I get rid of anger. Not at all. Speaking to all the children of God. And it says, if we are born again, if we are children of God, the things that make you angry, analyze them. What's that? The voice of somebody. The action of an ignorant person or the habit of a person who does not have control over himself or the selfishness of a self-centered person. Why should that make you angry? It's like you're angry because a fish is swimming according to its nature. It's you're like angry because a bird is flying according to its nature. It's like you're angry because a sinner is sinning according to its nature. It's like you're angry because a person who has not been cleansed of self is self-centered according to its nature. That shouldn't make you angry if you are saved, you are a child of God. Analyze what makes you angry and then come to God and say, God, I need your grace that whatever people say and whatever people do, they act according to their level, according to their understanding, according to their sinfulness. Therefore, as they act out their nature, I will not be angry. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and when that is put away there's a vacuum that is created inside there you must feel that vacuum look at verse 32 in verse 32 and be ye kind one to another you cannot be kind and angry at the same time 
You cannot be loving and angry at the same time. You cannot be happy, joyful, and angry at the same time. You cannot be smiling, real wide smile, smiling and angry at the same time. Replace the wrath, replace the malice, replace the anger, and replace the clamor with the fruit of the Spirit. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you it will be done in Jesus name number two number two is the peculiar messengers with demonstrated prophecies demonstrable prophecies as I read this I need to maybe I should remind you the Old Testament prophets they were sometimes told to demonstrate their prophecies Another word for that demonstrate is to dramatize their prophecies. We're told in Isaiah, I got told Isaiah, he said, remove your shoe and remove your outer coat and walk naked before the children of Israel for three years and tell them as I'm dramatizing it before you and I'm walking naked before you. So will they take you to captivity and you walk naked before them? God told, um, he told Jeremiah, he said, take a bottle and go before the elders of the children of Israel and press up that bottle and then I'll smash it and throw it into the river and take a big stone, wrap it up, all the negative prophecies against them, throw it into the river and with all the ripples and tell them that is how uh, Nebuchadnezzar Babylon will be thrown thrown into the river. They demonstrated, they dramatized their message. Ezekiel, come on here, uh, take wheat and barley and they uh, grind everything together and put dung in it, what comes out of a man, and then eat it in the presence of the children of Israel. And Ezekiel said, oh Lord, how can I do that? I've never taken anything unclean or polluted in my life. All right, I give the dung of a cow, of a bull, and mix it there, and then you eat it before the them lie down on one side for a long time in the presence of the children of Israel demonstrate your prophecy dramatize your prophecy and tell them this is how you will eat in the captivity those prophets were sometimes told to dramatize their messages and to demonstrate their messages so that the children of Israel will understand the pungency of the message that the prophets are given. And then now we are to speak the message of the word of God in such a clear tone. You know, you cannot just fold your hand and stand rigid somewhere and then to preaching the word and demonstrating the word your head will not shake and your mouth will you know just uh, barely you cannot do that you have to show that you believe the message you're giving and then you demonstrate it before the people in first corinthians chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto these people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, says the Lord. And then in verse 22, it tells us, it says, Wherefore tongues I for a sign to signify something, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Verse 23, it then says, uh, it says, if therefore the whole church become together into one place and one speak, and all speak with tongues, they, and there come in one that or those that are unlearned or unbelievers will not say that will not they say that ye are much but you know 
the signs he has given us is not only the sign of speaking in tongues. If you look at Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 17, he gives us other signs that we can demonstrate to kind of make the message very clear in the hearts of the people. He says, and this sign shall follow them that believe. Signs are coming. Signs and wonders are coming. They are knocking at your door. And as you open the door, those signs and wonders will come to you in Jesus' name. This sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Devils are going to be cast out. They shall speak with new tongues. New tongues of power will come forth. In verse 18, your amen is weak. Verse 18... They shall take off serpents, all those serpentine spirits, they'll be thrown away in Jesus' name. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. All the poison that might have been lodging in your body at the mention of the name of Jesus, all that poison, everything will go away in Jesus' name. And they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. I can't hear the amen. amen. This week you have heard from this Thursday until next week Tuesday, signs and wonders for the needy. Amen. I'll be a partaker. I said I'll be a partaker. And it's going to take place in Calabar, but then it's going to come to you. Anywhere you are, it will reach you in Jesus' name. Amen. Signs and wonders for me, for you, for all of us in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, And they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord was them and confirming the word, and confirming the word, and confirming the word. For signs following. Let somebody shout amen. Yeah. Number two. Number number three is the prevailing messengers over discerning people. Prevailing messengers over discerning people. First Corinthians chapter 14. We're looking at verse 24. First Corinthians 14, 24. And if, they all, and if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, and one on learned, he is convinced of all, is judged of all. Then verse 25, it says, And those are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. When the word of God comes forth and it prevails on the hearts of the people, whether they are sinners or they are sick people or they are suffering or they are tormented, and the word comes to them, and the word is made personal and the word of god takes effect in every one of their lives if they're sinners they'll be saved if they are saved, they'll be sanctified if they're sick they'll be healed if they are tormented they'll be delivered god will put testimony in every mouth and then they'll have testimony god is in your midst indeed that's how the word is going to prevail in this uh, coming program where we're going to have, which we're going to have. In your life, the word will prevail. In your invitees, the word will prevail. In those who are sick, the word will prevail. In those who are dead spiritually, the word will prevail. In the people who are backsliding, the word will prevail. In the people who don't know whether they are saved or not, they are here, they are there, and they are wondering, am I saved? How can I be sure? The word will prevail in their lives in Jesus' name. 
and then more than that in you i said more than that in you every yoke in your life will be broken more than that in you every problem in your life will be solved more than that in you every tormenting power anything that troubles your soul your spirit your mind everything the world will prevail upon them in jesus name your sight will be recovered your hearing will be recovered your life will be recovered new fire and new zeal and new power will come in your life the word will prevail in your life in jesus name all the confusion of the past and all the problems of the past everything will vanish away and then you will not have any problem after the program give me a good amen you will become a problem to the devil the devil will turn here and then meet you here you say in the name of jesus he will flee away and then he says what am i going to do with this young man this young woman you are a problem to me instead of you saying get out he will be telling you get out of my way get out of my way because you will become a problem to the devil i i i will be a problem to the devil rise up and tell the lord rise up and tell the lord that this program coming uh, you're going to have the word of god and the word of god will prevail in your life open your mouth and tell the lord you'll be a problem to the devil you will prevail the word of god and the power of god will prevail in your life and will prevail through your new days are coming powerful days are coming and the word of god will do good in your life in jesus name open that mouth open that mouth and say oh lord i come oh lord i come i'm going to receive like i received tonight the word of your power and the word of prophecy and the word that prevails and there'll be peculiar power peculiar power that comes with that prophetic preaching and everything in my life that should not be there everything will be blown up by the wind of the spirit of god the word will prevail open your mouth and tell the Lord and be sure and be sure and be sure there's no confusion there's no doubt and there's no unbelief the word of God will prevail in your life have understanding have understanding in Mali's be children. In unbelief, be children. Let the word, the prophetic word, penetrate your heart. The message of the former prophets, the ministry of the former prophets, but the ministry of the prophets have brought them out. Let that ministry of the prophet bring you out today, out of darkness, out of captivity, out of slavery, out of powerlessness. Let the ministry of the prophet bring you out. And by the ministry of the prophets, they were preserved. Let the ministry of the prophets, proclaiming the word, edifying the church, exhorting the believers, comforting the believers, encouraging the believers. Let that ministry of the prophet, of the preacher, of the pastor, edify you, preserve you. Preserve your Christian experience of salvation. Preserve your zeal. Let that ministry preserve your faith. 
Let him preserve your consecration. Let the ministry of the prophet preserve your conviction. Preserve your life. Preserve a positive impact, positive stance in your life. By the ministry of the prophet who are brought out, by the ministry of the prophet who are preserved. Be edified. Let the word you are hearing edify you. Like the food you eat nourish you. What of comfort? What of power? What of revelation? What of truth? What of life? What of holiness? What of righteousness? Let the word penetrate. Let the word influence you. Let the word transform you. And let the evidence of that edification be known to everyone around you. Let the word make you grow. Mal is all gone. You will speak in all gone. Strive, evil thoughts, all gone, envy, jealousy, all gone. And your heart should not be in a vacuum. You replace all those things after the anger is gone, the malice is gone. The evil speaking is gone. After the gossiping is gone. Replace them with kindness. Gentleness. Freedom from sin. Strength. Spiritual strength. Maturity. Living holy and righteous all the days of your life. Bold, courageous, not running away from every trial and temptation, but standing and putting those evil things on the run until you become a problem to the devil himself. And when you speak, be clear. Speak in words, clear, distinct, persuasive, that others will hear and discover themselves. Others will hear and repent. Others will hear and be convicted and be preached in their hearts. Speak in such a way you are not speaking to the air. You are speaking to the hearts of men and women. And they hear, they understand. And they'll respond 
appropriately to the word you have heard. Clear the mystery. Clarify the mystery in the things you say. Be passionate, be persuasive, be pungent, pointed, penetrating. And the word you hear, let it lead you to consecration, lead you to prayer. Lead you to faith. Lead you to progress in spiritual things. And let the word have a permanent influence, impact in your life. Don't forget what you have heard. Let the word change you. Transform you. Make you to grow. Make you matured. Make you steadfast. Make you a terror, a problem to the devil. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we have heard today. We pray that the profit of this word will be permanent in every life. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you take everything we've heard, walk everything through in our hearts, in our lives, in our spirits, and make us the mature, standing, steadfast, mighty, powerful, persuasive children of God, we ought to be in Jesus' name. Knock every fear out of our lives. Grant us the spirit of the conqueror. Bold, persuasive, standing, conquering children of God, in Jesus' name. The things that were problems to us before will come under our feet. We have overcome. We will keep on overcoming until the trumpet will sound. We will remain overcomers in Jesus' name. Every step of the way, make us Lord conquer us by your word, by the Spirit. And we pray, Lord, we'll not be intimidated by anything that comes across our way, but every spirit, every sickness, every sin, every evil will come under our feet. Make every one of us conquer us by your word in Jesus' name. And Lord, in this uh, program that we're all going to participate in as signs and wonders for the needy, starting uh, this Thursday, Lord, we pray every problem in every life of your people here and everywhere in church and online, every problem will be rolled away in Jesus' name. Power manifestation. Power demonstration. And the power that breaks every yoke will take place and everyone will benefit in Jesus' name. And you'll put testimony in every mouth. Signs and wonders for everyone. Signs and wonders for you. Signs and wonders for your family. Signs and wonders for all our invitees signs and wonders everywhere 
globally in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray.